Scorpio and welcome to Soul Guidance with Adriana. I'm a transformational life coach and abundance consultant. I help you choose growth. I've got an intuitive reading for you this week for your journey. And although I'm showing you this card right now, we're actually going to save it for last. So let's get started. Five of Wands. Interesting way to start the week. A lot of energy, a lot of maybe tense, nervous energy. Feels like it's environmental. So very important to be aware of this. Very important to allow this energy to just go where it needs to go. Eventually it's going to dissipate. But you may see a little bit more conflicts. You may see a little more misunderstandings between others. I don't feel as though you're involved in it, but you're being shown this for a reason. Not so that you can fix it, but just so that you can be aware of it. Okay, it's kind of like people doing, they're doing this dance together to work something out. And your interference or your help is not needed at the moment, but you kind of just use this opportunity to observe where everyone else is, because I have a feeling this information that's contained in here will be useful later. You know, it's funny, you can tell a lot about someone by the way that they play sports or the way that they do something. A lot of their personality comes out in the way they respond. Are they offensive or, or defensive? Do they like to be, you know, on the front pushing things? What is their strategy? So there's a lot you can observe just from watching people in conflict with each other. And for some reason, you're just supposed to store up that information right now. Okay, beneficial energy, queen of wands, good omen. And three of wands being the challenging energy. Now, this is funny. I just finished the Scorpio reading, which was all pentacles. Now we're in the Scorpio reading. Did I say Scorpio twice? I meant Sagittarius. We're in the Scorpio reading, and now you've got all wands. <laughs> so, earth, wind, and fire. Okay. The three of wands is asking you not to push energy forward too soon. Okay, not to, the, this is referring back to this five of wands here, not to have that conflict resolved too soon. And not to look, not to get caught up with looking too far out in front. Okay, because there's something in this whole energy here. Five is a transformative number. There's something in the energy and the dynamics with people within that group that needs to shift and settle before you can project into the future about it. So when we're doing intuitive readings, we can sometimes project the future based on what we see in the present because you can see where the pattern is going. However, if that present changes, then that those conclusions aren't valid anymore. You have to do a new reading from where you are. Okay, so what you're assuming you're going to be seeing in the future is not on stable ground yet. It's still in the process of being worked out. And that brings us to our Queen of Wands. And I love this. She's sitting on the throne. I mean, this makes a perfect, it's almost like a little tableau, isn't it? These guys are involved in a struggle. She's out of it, sitting on the throne with her power. This person is off, you know, trying to project into the future about what is going to happen here. And the Queen of Wands is just saying, nope, I'm here right now and all the power lies with me. Queen of Wands is really asking you to be strongly connected with the energy of prophecy, but not to force it. To allow the prophecy to arise when it does, to allow the intuitions to come to you when they do, but not to worry about if you can't see, not to worry about if you're not getting all of the information. I feel like there's something else in this Queen of Wands card, so I just wanna sit with it for a second because there's a cat message. You know, the first card, which I said we weren't gonna talk about, this is cat, and she's got a cat under her. When we think of big cats, we think lions and tigers, which are the most powerful cats. Actually, jaguar might be the most powerful as far as the jaw. 
Okay, okay. So it's about containing your power. And that's why it's important to allow the prophecy and the intuitions to come towards you rather than searching after them. Because searching after them diffuses your power. Trying to figure out outcomes that have just not been settled yet is going to diffuse your power. There's all this fire kind of in the background and I never know with this card if she started it or if it's just there as a representation of her own energy. But what I feel for you right now, Scorpio, is that it's saying this fire could go out of control if you don't use it properly. The way to use this power properly is to contain it, allow it to attract the information to you, but do not go searching after the information. Let's get a little bit more, the Lord, and finally a different kind of card, Prince of Pentacles. We've got the theme of protection, but I, I feel like there's a deeper message here. And if you'll just give me a second, I want to reach it for you. Okay, where are we going here? Okay, again, waiting, waiting, biding your time, receiving. This Lord here has got antlers and antlers are often psychic, right? They, they grab information, they're antennas. And although the Lord is the protector, he's stationary right now. The Prince of Pentacles is stationary right now. This almost feels like hanged man energy where we're in a holding period. But I believe all of these together are saying stand firm, stand your ground on a lot of different levels, okay? We've got to protect this power, the power inherent in this card. That is what the Lord is here to do. So if you find that these people are getting a little bit too close, they're coming into your energy field a little too much, make sure to put up appropriate boundaries. Now, our Prince of Pentacles, what is he doing? <laughs> Um, the Prince of Pentacles is afraid to show up. And is this someone else or is this part of the Scorpio energy? Okay, they're saying it's part of the Scorpio energy. So what is afraid to show up? Huh. Now, I know I've been talking a lot about prophecy, but for some of you, I feel you're going to experience a stronger upgrade of your intuition this week, and some of that may be powerful. Some of that may be, some of that may take you by surprise. It will not be what you're expecting, and there's going to be a reluctance to want to use it. You know, seeing things that you don't normally see, seeing deeper than you normally see. And this Prince of Pentacles is saying, no, 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 I don't want to see that. And there's also an idea of not wanting to really share what you're getting, wanting to hold all your cards inward, all your energy and your perceptions inward. But this brings us to, I love cats, the cat card. Cats are all about intuition, especially this card, the magic of intuition and being willing to trust what you're getting, say what you're getting, share what you're getting and realize that, you know, you're not your mind. Our minds are very tiny fraction of us. Our intuition is more of our pure higher self than the mind is. The mind is has been formed from our environment, but the higher self is timeless and it is through intuition that it speaks. And the advice and the knowing that you're going to get as you sit on your throne and you watch everyone in their chaos, the advice and the knowing that you are going to get is going to be deeper and stronger and more profound than it has ever been, okay? There's a, this lightsaber thing <laughs> happening in the background, this, this pyramid, this upward facing. 
triangle that is pointing straight to the divine and there's actually another triangle inside it at the top i don't know if you can see that and even every little cat ear is a triangle like a little another little antenna like i'm grabbing this higher this is more than an upgrade it's really heightened intuition it's heightened knowing and it's heightened seeing farther than usual as long as you're not trying to force it, as long as you're allowing the information to come to you and allowing yourself to see through the darkness. Yeah, for those of you that are also light workers and maybe coaches or counselors or mentors yourself, I feel like this reading is going to have a very profound effect on your practice because you're going to be seeing even deeper than you normally see. And I know you see pretty deep, but this is going to be even deeper to the places where people may not even know are there. You know, it's so locked down that it may not even be there. So maintain your power, wait for the moment, and be open to everything this new energy is trying to show you. Okay, Scorpio, <laughs> thank you so, so much for joining me and sharing your time and energy. If you'd like to leave a comment, I always love to hear from you. And I wanted to let you know that my solstice readings are available again. These are really special readings that I don't offer all year. So if you'd like to learn more, soulguidancewithadriana.com or there's a link in the description below. Look forward to seeing you next time and have a good one.